So I've done a lot of videos on starting various Unimogs, um, and I've kind of gone through the dash and what's on the dash. And I normally went through briefly kind of what all these levers are, but I thought I'd do that in a little more detail in this video. I've gotten a lot of requests for people who kind of want to get a more thorough rundown. And this particular Unimog has a lot of the levers. It basically has everything you can get. Not all Unimogs will have all of these levers. In fact, some of them may just have like the forward and the reverse and the main gearbox. Um, but this is basically, for the most part, the, the, the most amount of levers that you would normally encounter in a Unimog. And I'm going to kind of film this. It's, it's not in vertical or horizontal mode. It's a little bit difficult. So I thought I'd just kind of film it sideways like this. Um, so bear with that as I go through this video. Anyhow, anybody who's got a Unimog or has maybe been inside one will be familiar with these pictograms. So this pictogram here kind of shows what the uh, kind of the gearbox does. So you've got your eight speeds right there. Um, this is referring to the park brake, which I'll also go over. Uh, and then you've got your bunny rabbit, donkey, and turtle. And I gotta love the uh, the ride a mower references there. But uh, basically, those are the the, the various um, transfer boxes or reduction gear boxes, which I'll go into. And then what you've got here is you've got your PTO speed, front and rear PTOs, and again, this has to do with the various uh, ranges, gearbox ranges that you've got. So let me just get back to our, uh, all our levers here and kind of cover some of these for you. So first and foremost, you've got the gearbox here. And so you've got an eight speed gearbox. It's one through eight. These are all fully synchronized. What this is actually similar to would be like if you were in a four speed uh, old school like Land Rover, Land Cruiser, Jeep that has a high range and a low range. Um, you can kind of think of this as having all of those eight speeds, but all in one gate. So one through four on this truck is more like um, one through four low and then five through eight is more like first through fourth in your high range. So normally, if you're kind of just doing moderate off-road stuff, you may use first, second, and third. Uh, but normally on-road, you wouldn't use first and second and third very often. You might start off in fourth or you might start off in fifth, depending on how the vehicle is loaded. So in the high range, you'd use this a little bit more like... Um, like a four speed or a five speed gearbox as opposed to using all eight. The the lower gears are more for like granny gears for off-roading. Um so it's it's a little bit different though, whereas if you were in a Jeep or a land cruiser, um you would have like first and second low would be your lowest gears, but third and fourth low would have a lot of overlap with first and second high. So Third low is often on a lot of vehicles very similar to first high. So there's an overlap. But on a Unimog, there is no overlap. These are eight different gear ratios that, you know, incrementally go higher up. There, there's no overlap. So you really do have eight speeds on this vehicle. Um, the next thing you've got is this here. And this is the forward reverse on some of the newer Unimogs. And it would be forward neutral reverse on the the older SBUs. So this here, so right there, you're in forward. That's neutral, which you'd use like in towing and for some other situations, that's reverse. So you've got these three gears. The eight speeds work in reverse. And it is true that in fact, um, top speed is eighth gear reverse. It's a, it would go faster in reverse than in forward. Not that you would ever want to try to go that fast in reverse. It'd be pretty squirrely. But anyway, you, what's nice about that is if you're plowing or you're doing work where you're going back and forth a lot. So if I'm plowing, I might put this into third gear 
plow into to the snow and instead of having to like go to reverse you just so if i was in forward i plow in just reverse never take this out of gear you obviously have to use the clutch but you don't actually have to take it out of gear so it'll hold the gear same thing if you're going up a really steep hill maybe in again third or second gear uh you're going up the hill you have a failed ascent you just boom hit the clutch pop it in reverse let it out and it's going to go in reverse you don't have to mess around with this and you'll also be going in the same gear going forward as going back obviously you can choose to shift gears and and you don't have to do that but that's that's what um is nice about this feature so it's more like a tractor the next thing you've got um, if I'm going to stick with the gears, is you've got these two levers right here. So this vehicle has three ratios. It's basically got the on-road on one-to-one ratio so that the gearbox goes directly through the, the um, transfer case and it's just a one-to-one -one ratio. You then have the... Um, the what what are called the working gears and these are lower gears i i geez i think working gear off the top of my head this would normally be like one to 80 or 90 um so it's a pretty good ratio it's as low as most vehicles low one if you use the um working gears low one would be on par with like about 400 to one ratio um, and then you also have on this truck the crawler gears, which is the turtle. And the crawler gears are like 3,000 to 1, somewhere around there. Um, they're, they're crazy, crazy low gears. So what you would do normally – so right now the way this vehicle is set up is you've got one lever. This lever um, right here determines whether – you're in the normal road range or if you're going into um, one of the, the, the auxiliary gearbox ranges. So this, right now, the way this is set up is I am in rabbit. So I'm in the road speed mode here. If I shift this forward, now I'm in one of the two auxiliary gearbox ranges. If this truck only had working gears, so there, there, were two, there were two options you could get. You could get just working gears or you could get working and crawling gears. So if you just had the working gears, then this would be the only lever you would have and you'd now be in the working gear range. But because this vehicle also has crawling gears, that's what this lever is for. So right now, we're in donkey. And the donkey is the working gears. If I pull this forward, now we're in creeper gears. So again, this one just determines if we're using an ex This is no auxiliary gearboxes engaged. This is auxiliary gearbox engaged. And then this one determines which auxiliary gearbox you're using. This one is the creeper. That's the working. So that's how these work. So right now I am set up for working gears. And if I want to do like road driving, I just pull that back and now I'm road driving. If I wanted to creep, that's what I would do. So that's kind of the, the, the setup for your, your gears. And you can kind of see that there. So that's the auxiliary gearbox setup. And again, all eight speeds work in any of these. So when I go from, oh, let me wrap my head around this. All right. So right now I'm in Creeping. So again, I have all eight speeds in creeping and I have them in forward and reverse. And I have eight speeds when I'm in working again, forward and reverse. And I have eight speeds when I'm in road gears like that. So overall, I've got 24 forward gears and 24 reverse gears. And again, there's no overlap in any of those. And like low one uh, creeping is very, very low. So that kind of covers the gearbox scenario and the levers for the gearbox. The next set of levers are these two levers here, this one 
and this one. These levers have to do with the PTO, as does this lever. So this lever is actually a clutch for the PTO. So that's the equivalent of pressing your foot down on a clutch pedal. And then it has a little release on it and that releases the clutch. So if you want to engage the PTO, you have to first kind of like depress the clutch. And then this knob here has kind of a safety, it can either go forward, which is a thousand RPMs, or back at 540. So it's variable, like I forget what 540 is, it's like at 2200 RPMs, but if the engine's at like 2200 RPMs, someone will correct me if I'm wrong, but it's somewhere in that neighborhood. If you're at 2200 RPMs, you'll be, your PTO will be at 540 if it's there. This is a weird interlock. And it will be um, 1000 RPMs if it's forward. And then right over here, this vehicle has a front PTO, but Unimogs can have front and rear PTO. So if this lever is in this position, well, let me see where I'm at. All right, they're all kind of interlocks in here. But basically, if this lever is forward, then I'm using the, the front PTO. If it's all the way back, I'm using the rear PTO. And in the middle, which is where it's at now, both the front and the rear PTOs are engaged. So they're both spinning. And they'll either be spinning at 540 or 1000 RPMs. And when this is in the middle, it's neutral and the PTO is not engaged at all. The next thing we have here are the hydraulic circuits. So this truck has four hydraulic circuits and quite often on a Unimog you'll see like a red and a, and a green and a yellow and a blue. Those are the four circuits and they're color coordinated so you can kind of know which one you're using. Basically with these, you're either lifting you know, for this, I usually use this for a plow, so this would be side to side. This one would be lifting, dropping. You can float them. So when I do that, that's just floating. That's floating as well. So you're just, you're just, there's no pressure one way or the other. So if you drop a plow and you just want it to float, um, that's the float mode. And then this would be, you know, to raise it, drop it. Um, they're all quick connects. So you have four separate hydraulic circuits on this truck, for example. If I go here, I've got the dump bed up. And if I just basically do that, you can kind of see I'm just controlling the dump bed. So that's, that's what that circuit on this truck does. And normally these were plow ones. I don't normally use all four circuits, but then of course you do have this circuit. So that's kind of all of your hydraulic levers. Um, this right here is the park brake. It's an air actuated park brake. So you release it, let me put my foot on the brake. You basically kind of pull it back a little bit and it just pops forward and now the park brakes off. And there you can hear the park brake engaged. We've got one other little dial here. This is called the start pilot. This is an ether injection system. Um, I don't really use the start pilot that much. These trucks start fine even when it's really cold, especially the 24 volt trucks. Um, but what you would do is if you had the start pilot, you would put the ether fluid in a little bowl in the engine bay you'd pump this and that would pump the, the ether into the intake manifold. And that basically covers the levers in a U1450. This is like a 1989. Um, and that basically covers that. So I thought I'd do that. So again, you kind of get the, the idea right there of the little, um, all the options. So that's it. Thanks for watching.